Good evening and welcome to another Facebook Live session by Tetraki. My name is Mark Hopkins, I hope you're well. Um, speaking to you from Durban, South Africa, I'd like to welcome um, friends, colleagues, future partners, current partners, future clients, current clients from around the world, Australia, Canada, States, the UK. We're actually here in the midst of... Um, a cyclone is about to hit us, so we are bunkering down a little bit. But, um, down in Durban, we're a little bit more sheltered down here, but if anyone's being affected by that cyclone, we, we wish you the best and hope you're not affected too badly. So tonight we're going to talk about uh, alignment is the key to success. This is number 32 of 260 that we'll be doing in 27, both Rob and myself. Uh, this is the last one I'll be doing on my own. Rob's back from his gallivanting holiday um, in the Kruger, so he'll be back online tomorrow, and Rob and I will be doing them together again next week. Uh, just as a reminder, please like them, share them. If you find there's some value in the content that I'm going to talk about tonight, and you know people who could do with listening to this, please send it to them, please share it with them. Don't forget, if you want to backtrack and listen to any of the talks we've done over 2017 and uh, last year, please go and look at YouTube where all the videos are uploaded and download the book The Profitable Ute Unstoppable Success, which will give you some real practical tools and tips on how to take your business to the next level. So, as I said, tonight is uh, talking about alignment. Um, I'll give you some practical things that you can do. Uh, I'm going to share some stories um, about how this came into fruition in. in Big multinational businesses and small businesses and how it could make a difference to your business today, tomorrow and the next few months. So first thing I want to talk to you about is what makes up a business. Um, so whenever you think about business, you're going to think about a purpose. The purpose is why is this business in existence? What is it trying to serve? Who is it trying to serve? And once you understand that kind of question... The next thing you're going to try and think about is what is the strategies of the business? What are the things that I'm going to do that's going to take this business into market? It's going to attract the right customers. It's going to retain the right customers. So the first pocket you need to be thinking about is the raison d'etre, the reason of living. Why is this business going to be successful? So first thing we need to be thinking about tonight is what is your purpose? What's your purpose of being and what are the strategies that you're going to, you're going to do and implement in order to be successful? So I want you to think about three circles. So the first circle is strategy and the purpose of the business. The second circle that I want you to think about is the organisational competencies and capabilities. These are the things that your business needs to have in order to be successful. It, needs, it might need to have a laptop in order to be able to send emails. It might need to have a cell phone in order to make phone calls to your customers. It's all the things that your business needs in order to be successful. It might need to be an IT system. If you're an IT provider, you need those systems in place in order to fulfill your purpose or strategy. So the second circle I want you to think about in your business is what are the organizational competencies and capabilities that you need in order to be successful. If you're a DSTV installer, if you're a satellite subscriber, a subscription installer, you need those capabilities in place. So that's the second circle I like you to think about. The third circle is your people competencies and capabilities. Even if you're a one-man band, even if you've got three, five, ten, fifty, a hundred, a thousand people working in your business, your business needs to have, is run by people and those people need to have skills, capabilities and competencies in order to execute the purpose or strategy of your business. If you do not have those capabilities and skills, then how is your business going to succeed? If you said if your business is an IT business and you employed me in order to fix IT problems, your business would fail because I am useless at that. It is not my air of expertise, I do not currently possess those skills, capabilities and competencies. Could I? Possibly I could go away, learn and train in order to develop those skills and competencies. But if you got me working now, I would do a really bad job for you, so I would never employ me as an IT expert. So there you go. I want to think about those three circles, your purpose and your strategy. What is your business here to do, to deliver, who's it targeting, how's it going to target? Then the second circle is, what are the organisational competencies your business need to have in order to be successful? 
And your third circle is what do my people need in order to be successful? So the similarity to success there. So what we're talking about is alignment. There is no point having the world's best strategy with the world's best product if your business hasn't got the competencies or capabilities in order to deliver it. It doesn't have the infrastructure in place in order for you to deliver it or doesn't have the people in order who can take it to market. All you have is a great idea. I've worked in a business recently where their strategy was a sound strategy. There was a sound growth strategy around this, but this growth strategy was a national strategy. And in the business, there were only two people working on this strategy. So two people supporting this whole business growth strategy it was never going to work. So we had a conversation, we recognised there was misalignment between the strategy and the people capabilities. We restructured the organisation, we added more bodies into that space. That business grew over a thousand percent last year, purely through identifying alignment or misalignment and fixing misalignment early. I was able to go to the sales leader and go in January, you are not going to hit target in 2016 because of this misalignment. So that's the first thing. Alignment around your strategy, your people, and your organization. But most businesses have something that sits all around those three bubbles, which is the culture. And I must admit, whenever people talk about culture of business, I get slightly nervous. I get slightly nervous because the whole reason that you want a culture of business is that your people on a daily basis can live and breathe the realities of what that looks to manifest itself to clients, customers, and internal staff. So I can tell you a story. Um, unfortunately, it's not a nice story. Um, in 1987, in King's Cross uh, Underground Station in London, there was a fire. And like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't a nice story. And 31 people, unfortunately, lost their lives in this fire. And over 100 people were injured. The London Underground did a review of the fire. And they identified 12 trigger points that, when put together, would have stopped the fire or be able to save more lives than they were able. The first trigger point was a passenger came up to the ticket officer and said there's a smouldering tissue on the platform. Now the ticket officer's sole mandate was the queue in front of his booth. So what did he do? He ran downstairs, got the tissue, put the tissue out, back to his booth. Twelve of those trigger points. And what the London Underground realised is they need to create a hook of the business. A hook, something that Every single person within that organisation can align themselves to and drive a culture through. And their hook was around safety. So understand what it is, the hook of your business, and align your culture to that hook. Now, once you understand the hook of the business, then you need to think about what are the behaviour changes that you need to embed into the business in order to bring around the change that you desire. So lots of companies at the moment are talking about customer centricity and those who work with me know that it's a slight frustration of mine when you come out with these beautiful labels. We are going to be a customer-centric organisation. Now, what does that mean? I see Jolene's joined us. Maybe Jolene has a different view of customer centricity than I do. So what do we need to do? We need to break down the behaviours into things that we can drive and measure on a daily basis. Now, we all know that behaviours are just multiple habits coming together at the same time. So think about your behaviour change, think about the culture that you want to embed into the business and then unpack it into the habits that that will break down into. What are the habits of the behaviour change that drives? And now we all know a habit, if you do something for 21 days or so in repetition, you're going to turn an activity into a habit. So as you take your behaviour change, you unpack your behaviour change into the habits and all we then focus and measure on are the activities that are critical to create the right habits. So that's so the activities that are critical to create the right habits. And the great thing about activities is you can observe, measure, feedback, you can give constructive criticism on a minute by minute, day by day basis. It's not like a culture change which is going to take 12, 18 months time. An activity can be have an impact on a daily basis. I was at a client recently and one of the things I've done on my own is to translate customer centricity into answering the phone. Now you may laugh, this is probably the most simple example of customer centricity. But if I'm in the kitchen at my house and my phone's in the hall and I walk to the lounge, past the phone and the phone goes, at home I'm going to pick up the phone. So why don't you do it in your place of work? I picked up the phone into a head office. It was a customer who came through to the wrong number. 
The fact that I picked up the phone, answered the query, put the phone down, it's, for me, it was a customer centricity. But it's an activity that can be measured straight away. So as you think about alignment, alignment is broken down into the business purpose and strategy that you're doing. It's broken down into the organisational capabilities and competencies that your business needs to have. Do you have all those capabilities and competencies built or are you investing in those in the future? Is that investment aligned to the future direction of your business? Then you need to make sure you recruit and have the people who have the skills and capabilities in order to deliver on your promise to the market. Okay, but now your job as a business leader is to bring that culture and that environment together that makes this recipe and turns the ingredients, follows the recipe and it turns it into this beautiful cake. So my challenge for you tonight as I, I wrap up is think about where you want this business to go. Look at your strategy, look at your purpose and ask yourself the questions, what do I need from an organisational competency point of view and a leadership capability, people capability point of view, what do I need in order to ensure success? What are the competencies and capabilities I need in my business to ensure success? And audit yourself. Do I have them? Very simple question. Do I have it? Yes or no? If no, why not? What am I going to do about that? Very, very simple question. Do I have it? Yes, no. And then think about the environment that you want to work in and you want people who you work with to be living, breathing and talking about to friends and customers. And unpack that into the activities that you want to see from your team on a minute by minute, day by day basis. Now I'm not talking micromanagement at all. I cannot stand micromanagement. I'm talking about putting the right focus on the right activities that's going to generate the right habits that's going to bring around behaviour change. And then guess what happens, ladies and gents? People wake up 18 months' time and culture change has happened naturally. It is not some label that we're going to be customer-centric. You live, breathe it on a minute-by-minute, day-by-day basis. So that's my challenge for you. Unpack your strategy into how you're going to do it. Look at your capabilities and competencies. Unpack the culture that you want to do and be known for and break that down into the habits and activities and then measure those activities on a minute by minute, day by day basis. And I guarantee you will see the culture and the behaviours that you want to have in your business if you as the business leader live and die by those yourself. You have to have a consistency to ensure that alignment brings success. So on that note, I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to say thank you very much for joining. Please like, please share this this message. Please give me some feedback if you disagree. I'd love to get into a really good dialogue and conversation with you about that. If you want me to articulate further some of the, the concepts and ideas that I've shared with you tonight, please drop me a message and I'll get back to you within 24 hours. If I wasn't clear enough in terms of the how, because that's Tetraki's promise, please ask me again and again I'll post it for you all to, to read and look at. So on that note, I wish you a very pleasant evening wherever you are in the world. For those guys in Australia, I hope you have a great and productive day today and I will speak to you soon. Good night.